I looked up from my desk yesterday and realized over the past five or six months I've been buying all of these new Star Wars fan-made toys. And I'd planned to do videos about them and then never did because I was busy with all of these other videos. So it's time to rectify that mistake. All right, where to begin? Uh, well, let's start with Efont Mon from the next 17. This is a new figure from a new maker in the vintage Kenner space, and overall, it's a really nice effort. I'd call this an indestructible brick of vintage-inspired goodness. He's based off the barely-seen large puppet monster in Jabba's palace in Return of the Jedi. Clearly taking cues from Kenner's design style for a robed figure like this, he doesn't have movable legs of any kind, just working arms. The joints are nice and tight, and as a Jedi-era figure, he comes very appropriately with a stick type accessory. I'm assuming this is a club or some sort of walking cane. Efont Mon looks right at home with the other Jabba's palace creatures and is a nice addition to a vintage display. If I had any gripe about this artisan figure, it would be the color choice for the hair on his forehead. While the hair was a reddish brown on the puppet in the film, and while I understand the choice to differentiate the hair from the brown robe, at a glance it looks like Efont Mon has been hit in the forehead with a bat and is bleeding profusely. So, what kind of blaster is that? Crazy, right? My grandfather gave it to me yesterday. He calls it a gun. A gun? I've never heard of that. Yeah, I'm still trying to figure out how it works. Well, you might not want to figure it out by whipping it out here on patrol. Oh, man, I wasn't... I mean, you saw... I don't think telling Gary this was another drill is going to fly this time. But in all seriousness, this is a great addition to the Vintage Kenner line, and one I'm very glad that a fan maker decided to tackle. Okay, so next up are the new Sand Troopers and Rebel Fleet Troopers from Pro Custom Figures. The Fleet Troopers have a really perfect Kenner look to them, and you can get them in a variety of skin tones and even with or without mustaches. What I love the most is they come with black versions of the Kenner Bespin Blaster, which if you recall from way back during our Blaster Masters episode of Star Wars Follies, is actually the Rebel Trooper Blaster from the films. So seeing this blaster here as Kenner made it, but in a more 1985 Power of the Force color, is a spot-on choice. Strangely, all of the right arms on these Rebel Fleet Troopers feel a bit loose at the shoulder when posing them. The useless left arms are all solid and tight, but the arms that hold the blasters all have a lot of wiggle and give at the shoulder. While the arms stay upright now as new, I'm not sure if they would continue to do so if the figures were used frequently. I also managed to pick up one of each of Pro Custom Sand Troopers, one with each color of the shoulder pauldron. These are sent with black versions of both the classic Kenner Stormtrooper Blaster, as well as a black version of the larger Kenner Rifle that came with the vintage Imperial Snow Trooper and Dengar. For some reason, I always visualize the Sand Troopers with the big rifles, so that's what I opted for for display. Their shoulder pauldrons are nicely larger than the other vintage-inspired Sand Trooper customs in the past, and they wrap around the neck as they did in the film. Interestingly, the older Vader Trader Sand Troopers added the ammo magazine pouches on the opposite shoulder and the blaster holster, while Pro Customs did not. I'm assuming in the interest of channeling Kenner, they felt such a detail would not have been utilized on figures back in the late 1970s. The backpacks on the Pro Custom Troopers are larger as well. Unlike the Rebel Fleet Troopers, the Sand Troopers have no issues of joint looseness in the arms or legs. I also picked up a bevy of Stan Solo figures and parts a few months ago. First up is his latest droid, R3-M3, another of the clear domed robots seen on the Death Star in the original film. As I've said previously about the Stan Solo droids, I love adding the new versions to my Kenner collection, because they really enrich the display while looking as if they were made in the 70s and 80s. These figures are part of that lost tradition of being able to pick up characters that were barely in the movie that you knew little to nothing about, but could make up all new stories with them. I took the opportunity to pick up a pair of his Stormtroopers as well. Given the prices of actual Kenner Stormtroopers these days due to army builders, these almost exact reproductions are a great way to add more Imperial cannon fodder to your playsets and displays without breaking the bank on Kenner originals that cost more on average these days than the fan-made versions. I also grabbed his excellent R2 unit third leg, 
that fits right into the vintage versions as well as his modern variants. These are sold in two sizes. One size for the original R2, sensor scope R2, and R5-D4, and then the smaller version for the pop-up lightsaber R2, which also fits all of the Stan Solo droids. These are made in colors to match every droid he's produced. It really helps energize a Kenner display to see some droids wheeling around while others are standing and assisting with various tasks. Stan Solo included a rather mysterious letter in the parcel, and I wanted to read it to you. Hey, Michael. Thank you for your order. Wanted to let you know, we're now two down and one more to go on your three unicorns. Han's in the bucket, and soon Leia is on the throne. Keep up the good work, mate. Chris, Stan Solo. That's exciting. Next up, I finally managed to use the new X-Wing repair plates from Pop Culture Emporium. These are specifically designed to reinforce cracked wing assemblies. They are sent in pairs, with each plate specific to either side of the center hinge of the wing spar. Using a strong plastic cement, you line up the brake and then glue the plate down on the external side of the brake, either the top if an upper wing, or the bottom if a lower wing, as you don't want the plate in between the wings when closed, as it would impede the wing's closing flush. Now that the wing mechanism is fully repaired, thanks to Pop Culture Emporium's reinforcement plate, I can begin the long journey of restoring this X-Wing. However, because it was a shell, I thought this would be a great opportunity to rejuvenate it with some fan-made custom parts. I found a maker out of the UK called Wastrich on eBay. What excited me about his effort was his inclusion of the various ladders for the pilot and ground crew as options. In addition, he designed these amazing landing strut extensions for both the front and rear of the X-Wing that raise its profile, making it look more accurate to the film, and also allow the ladders to attach properly. Wastrich also made an upgraded R2 button for the vintage X-Wing that looks more accurate to the movie droid, though it requires being painted, and admittedly, I haven't gotten around to it yet. He also sells the four cannons, both in movie-accurate styling and in vintage styling, but I went with the movie-accurate styling just to see how they panned out. They really give the old Kenner ship a more commanding profile. Finally, there's his X-Wing canopy, done in a windowless design with just the exterior frames, similar to how Mego did the canopy for the Buck Rogers Starfighter. There may be a way to add window panes if you're an enterprising customizer, but it's noteworthy that Wastrich added the dashboard controls as well to the canopy for extra detail. Alas, his canopy design never quite agreed with this vintage X-Wing. To his credit, Wastrich sent two replacements, as he was also baffled why the part wasn't closing properly. In the end, I discovered the rear of the canopy frame was too thick, and I spent some time cutting and sanding the back of one of the canopies down to allow it to function. Overall, the majority of the Wastrich parts really breathe new life into battered vintage X-Wings. And speaking of breathing new life into my vintage Star Wars toys, my final round of purchases came straight from the trash compactor. Specifically, the Etsy seller Trash Compactor, who has designed new accessories for the vintage Kenner figure range. His store is filled with little upgrades for the Kenner line, such as clip-on sand trooper pauldrons and backpacks, accurate Boba Fett blasters, and even Boba Fett's cape and holiday special weapon, both of which I added to my Pro Customs rocket-firing holiday special Boba Fett. But the innovations that caught my attention the most out of Trash Compactor's huge list of items were the removable Stormtrooper belts with working holsters, and most astoundingly, a fix so profound it gave my brain a sigh of relief that I didn't even know it had been holding in for 40 years. Trash Compactor has designed a special blaster that takes the place of the original Luke's lightsaber accessory and makes it possible for Luke to finally brandish a Stormtrooper weapon like he did in the film. It's an amazingly simple design, and it does no harm to the vintage figure whatsoever. The belts and Luke blaster were so amazing, I put them on my childhood Luke and Han that are always on display in the Palatoy Death Star. And before you give me grief, the only reason Han isn't holding a Stormtrooper blaster as well is because I don't want his hand stretched to the point that he can't hold his original blaster anymore. I know I say this every time, but very few things in the last several years have consistently given me as much enjoyment as new fan-made items inspired by Kenner Star Wars. Whether it's Efontmon, a blaster for Luke Skywalker, a Rebel Trooper, a Death Star droid, a fix for the Vintage X-Wing, or some major upgrades for the Vintage X-Wing, the fan makers continue to inspire me and keep me engaged in the toy collecting landscape. The fans are doing the best work, 
and I'm so grateful that I'm able to witness it happen. As always, the links are in the description below. We'll see you on the next video. Hope you enjoyed that, everyone. If you want to see more videos about fan-made toys, you can watch our fan-made Airwolf review here. Or you can watch our entire fan-made toys playlist here. And now I'm going to go have a lot of fun putting all of these new fan-made Star Wars toys into my display.